Mm-mm-mm. Do me a favor before we start this video. Y'all already know the vibes. <coughs> Smash that like button. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Because we got some Jay-Z we're going to talk about today. And we're going to be here for a while. So make sure y'all get y'all popcorn, light y'all smoke up, all that. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Notification on. But most importantly, hit the like button. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the like, smash the like, it's free. It ain't gonna cost you, ain't gonna hurt your feelings, that part. So we talking about the Jay-Z blueprint that he had for him and Beyonce. So when I play these clips and I'm gonna explain to y'all, I'm gonna react to these clips and I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break down the years and the time set, y'all gonna be like, whoa, Hove had his plan the whole time. Yeah, that part. So if everybody think that the him and Dame Dash thing and Dame, um, in the back end, Dame was doing a lot of stuff that Hove wasn't improving, meaning that Jay wasn't improving, that Dame was doing. That's all BS. That wasn't the reason why they broke Rockefeller up, that part. The reason why they broke Rockefeller up, I'm going to explain it to y'all. It's for him and Beyonce to be where they at right now as we speak. A powerful couple, billionaire couple. They're powerful in the, in the industry, alleged, and everything I speak on is allegedly. We heard Kanye. Y'all see my last video with Kathy White. All types of allegations was going on with Jay since the early times to the mid-2000s, all that. When he got with Beyonce. And y'all got to remember, he got with Beyonce where he knew Beyonce at, what, 18 years old? Got with B around like 2002. He put Beyonce on the Blueprint album, Bonnie and Clyde. Y'all forgot? Beyonce was only about, what, 20? She was like 20 years old, going on 21 around that time. Next following year, in 2003, she dropped her album. She did a lot of copy styling. She copied a lot of upcoming R&B singers. And it's a it's, it's a it's a it's a R&B singer that a lot of people forgot. And her name is Blue. Also, Yo, who you talk about, Smoke? You ain't talking about Blue Ivy, right? Nah, I ain't talking about Blue Ivy. There was another female named Blue. She was nominated for three Grammys. She did a song with uh, um, Sean Paul, the Jamaican, the, the, the Jamaican artist, whatever, the one that was popular, the one that Beyonce did a song with. But she did a, she did a song with Sean Paul first. So when I play these clips, it's going to remind y'all everything. But the first clip I want to play for y'all, <laughs> it's a young Beyonce in 2000, praising Aaliyah. Rest in peace, Aaliyah. Rest in peace, baby girl. Cause you know, after that, she died in 2001. That's when Beyonce kind of got with Jay-Z in 2002. She was on Jay-Z album in 2002, Bonnie and Clyde, and the rest was history. <laughs> but she did a lot of copies. She copied a lot of R&B singers. She did a lot. And Jay-Z did a lot for her too. Jay-Z produced her first album. That part. What do we talk about? Am I lying? Let's go back to a young Beyonce praising Leah though. This is 2000 right here. What's up, what's up? This is Beyonce on the red carpet with one of the hottest female artists out here. Miss Aaliyah, how what's you up, doing, baby? girl? It's so good to see you again. You too. She's just looking fabulous. Thank what are you, you wearing are. tonight? I'm wearing Gucci. Gucci shoes, Gucci. Got a little Indian jewelry working. Oh, that is hot. Thank All right. You. Now, you've been working it with these movies. Uh, Were you nervous? Very nervous, but I'm real happy. It's something I've wanted for a long time, so yes. to finally make that transition, it's, you, it's great. You're doing another movie this summer, right? Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. things work out. Everything okay. will be rolling. That's so, yeah. great. What are you looking forward to seeing? Tonight? Tonight, yes. Um, I want to see D'Angelo perform. Girl, I'm with you because you, you know, know he's fine. He's fine. He's <laughs> hot. <laughs> All right. Back to you, Cisco. Now, that's 2000. Y'all think I'm lying? Go do y'all research. Y'all think I'm lying. That's the 2000 Awards, MTV. Her praising Aaliyah. And I remind you, she's still with Destiny Child. Destiny Child first album came out like 97, 98. For all y'all little Destiny Child fans, for anybody that's dead, y'all know I ain't lying. Let's get to that part. 2000 come. Beyonce comes on the red carpet because she's the most pretty one at the, at the Destiny Child. You know, she was the she was the front runner one. I mean, she was the one that was actually was going to lead off to be a solo artist that she was to this day, that she became to this day. But in 2000, she said how much she was praising Aaliyah, though. She was a big fan of Aaliyah. Big fan. Now, I'm going to play you two clips from 2002. 
We're going to skip a two years right quick. And then we're going to get to the other clips that high Beyonce copyrighted a couple of R&B singers, allegedly, and everything I speak on is alleged. And high Jay-Z helped with the copyright copy other R&B styles and took them and put them people to the back end. And we never heard to these R&B singers again. And that's still going on to this day. How you think ain't no competition for Beyonce in, the, in that R&B as far as the females? Mix a little hip hop. So let's let's go to 2002. Now y'all gonna see how Beyonce is acting with Jay Z. Now remind y'all, Jay Z's dating in his 30, 31 around there, 32. He met Beyonce. She was 18. He was 30. So in this, he got to be about 32. She's about 20, 21 around there. And you're gonna see how she's standing. Now you see the energy she had for Aaliyah, right? Now, peep the energy she got for Jay-Z. You could tell these people just put these people together and Jay-Z all groomed them. So let's play these two clips, man. Jay-Z knew what he was doing. I'm going to explain more to y'all. They're going to need all the cops with these fans. They're spilling out of the streets. Well, when you got a huge show with Beyonce and Jay-Z coming together in the vintage. She's got to be freezing. Oh, she's got to be freezing. New York, say hi to Jay-Z and Beyonce Knowles. Hi, baby. All right, come on over. Hey, and there's Jay. Oh, they got the microphones over there. Come on over, guys. Are you freezing? I'm cool. You all right? <laughs> you look so cold. I didn't realize it was so cold in New York. <laughs> Listen, we're going to spend the whole hour with Jay-Z and Beyonce. And we have a lot to do. They're gonna and you know why she came out there. It was so cold out there. That girl ain't got a jacket or nothing. You know why? Because sex appeal sells at the end of the day. Y'all got to remember that 2002, Aaliyah died a year before that. Her album dropped a year after that, after that infamous, um, you know, they came to MTV and they talked about um, Bonnie and Clyde. Because Jay-Z was promoting Bonnie and Clyde around that time in 2002. That was his album. He had he had a young Beyonce at that time. He's basically was a, he basically was letting everybody know who Beyonce was when he put her on Bonnie and Clyde. Because the next following year, that's when her album dropped. Dangerous in Love or whatever, Dangerous Love, whatever. Y'all know her first album. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She was 23 years old when she first dropped her solo album. Who produced it? Jay-Z did. Let's go to the second clip on the MTV. All right, all right. Now it's nice and warm. Beyonce, you've made, you've made that drive before with Mike Myers yes, on I Broadway. Yes, I It was crazy. Yeah, you were driving, though, I don't think, the last time you were doing that. I was driving. Were you actually driving? The, oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, I was very nervous. <laughs> From the Jaguar to the Corvette. Jay, how to feel to ride that old school vet? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. We shot a commercial with one of those vets. Uh, I, had to, I had to cop that. Do you own that car? Yeah, yeah. Not that one, but one like that, yeah. So how many rides you got? Uh, not, not many. A couple. Mm -hmm. One or two. Um... Let's get right into it. How did the two of the biggest names in music even meet? Well, we met a long time ago. Award shows, a lot of different performances. And at what point did the conversation come, hey, do you want to do some music? You know how people, you know, you, you, uh, you, know, you see each other and you respect each other's music. You know, it's always that conversation, you know, we got to do something. You know that. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. the time filler. Yeah. All right, all right. You see how Jay-Z played that off, y'all? You see how Jay-Z looked at her when she said, now go back and go back to that part where she said, oh, we met each other with doing performance and award shows. Now, remind y'all, if y'all met each other before that, she was only about 20 years old at that time. 21, going on 22. So you telling me that y'all met when y'all was like, what, 18, 17 years old? Destiny Child, on Destiny Child days? And you see how Hove looked at her? Now everybody's talking about yo, this gonna come to Hove next. All oh, this Diddy's our allegations gonna it's coming now, Hove next. That's what I'm talking about. Let's start off with the wife that he's with right now. Let's get to that part. Everything I speak on is a legend. On how he met her. He met her when she was young. He had a blueprint. He was gonna groom this female to be the R and B singer, the king of the female R and B singer to 
to who she is right now as we speak. And that's all Jay-Z work. What we talking about? Am I lying? Let's get to the clip that she stole her style from, allegedly, and somebody that I actually, somebody actually allegedly was messing with Jay-Z at the time when her career was coming up. Her name was Blue also. Let's get to it. But here's where the plot thickens. In 2001, Blue found herself getting cozy with none other than Jay-Z, who had just started... Now, remind y'all, 2001, she met Ho. She got a little cozy with him. Little kumbaya start going around between them two. I just played a 2000 clip when she, on when Beyonce was on the stage with, uh, with Aaliyah. If she did have any type of relationship with Ho at that time, they kept her the secret until Ho put her on an album on 2002, until Ho put her on his album with the Bonnie and Clyde. And then they go, they go promote it together on MTV and every, on everything like y'all just seen in 2002. And everybody allegedly thinking that they're together. Obviously they are. So let's let's continue with the clip. I just want to remind y'all who this girl Blue was and what in the year that she met Jay Z, <laughs> the infamous Hove man, king of New York. But he did a lot of dirtiness and a lot of nasty work. He was just like Diddy, no different. That part. Let's get to it though. But here's where the plot thickens. In 2001, Blue found herself getting cozy with none other than Jay Z. But here's where the plot thickens. In 2001, Blue found herself getting cozy with none other than Jay-Z, who had just started courting Beyonce. In the same period, Beyonce was busy carving out her solo career, and wouldn't you know it, in 2003, the same year Blue released Bittersweet, Beyonce's debut album, Dangerously in Love, hit the shelves. Rumor has it that this musical clash led to a heated rivalry between Beyonce and Blue, and that Beyonce wasn't just worried about Blue's rising success, but also had suspicions about her and Jay. Now Blue was quick to downplay any romance romantic involvement, insisting that it was all platonic. But then came the infamous Wendy Williams interview. When asked if things ever went beyond friendship with Jay, instead of flat out denying it, Blue let out a nervous laugh and dodged the question. Have you ever kissed Jay-Z romantically? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. <laughs> I know everybody's probably like, yo, why you bring a, who's this female blue and all this? What I'm trying to explain to y'all is when Beyonce came out with a solo album, these people in the industry, they copy other people. They look at their blueprints. They copy. They take little, all right, let me take a little bit over here from this artist. Let me take a little bit over here from this artist. Let me take this person's style over here. That's what they do. So what I'm trying to explain to y'all, that's what Jay-Z did with Beyonce. He groomed her. He gave her a style. He gave her R&B mixed with a hip hop type swag on her songs. What are we talking about here? Blue did the same thing, but see, Blue did it before her. She was a three Grammy nomination. She did a song with Sean Paul, did a couple other songs. She knew Hove. Hove knew her. Hove peeped that whole scenery. Took her style, put it on Beyonce a little bit. That part. That's why the Beyonce and the Blue altercation was going on in the early 2000s. Allegedly, they were saying that Blue and um, Jay-Z had something going on. But see, the thing is, Blue was old enough. She was in her mid-20s and all that. The other clips of my other players going to explain that. Beyonce, other hands, was only like 20, 19 years old. What are we talking about here? Let's continue with the clips. <laughs> oh, she's touching him up the neck. Look! Do you see? Why do people not want to let the Jay-Z blue cat trial thing go? Wendy then floated the idea that Jay-Z might have shifted his attention to Beyonce over Blue because Blue just didn't fit the young and naive bill that Jay supposedly preferred, and Beyonce was probably more easily influenced and manipulated. I said on the radio that I didn't think it would last, though. What, me and him? Yeah. Why? Because you're above 25. Why, he needs somebody younger than that? At the end of the day, yeah. Why do you say that? Because I... I think at the end of the day, a younger, um, less savvy to the ways of the world broad. Somebody a little bit more naive. You said it, not me. 
But the drama didn't stop there. After Beyonce and Jay-Z dropped the music video for their 2003 collaboration, Bonnie and Clyde, things took a messy turn. Blue didn't hold back and publicly claimed that the video was suspiciously similar to the promo for her song Roundup, which, by the way, hit the scenes first. But this copycat business apparently wasn't a one-time thing. In November 2002, Blue released a collab with Sean Paul titled Breathe, and just a few months down the road, Beyonce dropped Baby Boy, featuring none now, if y'all go to Breathe, go Google it, go do your research on YouTube. Blue was a one-hit wonder, but the only reason why, because they blackballed her, allegedly. That's what she feels. She feel like when Jay got with Beyonce, then groomed Beyonce to who she be. Now, shout out to Wendy Williams. You know, she's going through what she's going through now, but she done screamed this out back in early 2000, that hove like them younger girls because he could groom them. That part, allegedly, and everything we speak on is alleged. Now, remember, he was messing with allegedly Aaliyah before Dame took her. He had to find him one. Go go to all Dame interviews. Man, everything I want, he always, nah, man, he always wanted two. I mean, he liked them young. Dame used to say the same thing, but he used to say it in subliminals, though. Dame ain't say it exactly how Wendy Williams would say it or anybody else would say it. That part. But Dame said that he was on that level too. And he was on that R. Kelly, allegedly. Come on, what are we talking about? Why did he push himself away from Kelly when all the allegations came down on Kelly? But then you was messing. Come on, what we. You meet little B off of Destiny Child. You groom her, get with her when she's only, what, 21, 22 years old? You about 33, 34. What are we talking about here? You didn't find that strange? No, because he had to groom her for the blueprint that he was going to have for them to be what it's going to be at now. He blocked everybody. Everybody. Pardon me. Let's continue with the clips. Though. Let's continue with the blue. None other than Sean Paul. And remember how on Baby Boy, Beyonce belts out the line, let me breathe. Coincidence? Maybe, but the coincidences keep piling up. Another track from Beyonce's debut album, Signs, features lyrics like, I was in love with a Sagittarius. I wish he was a Virgo, the same sign as me, and know how to show me love because I've been hurt by a Pisces. Well, Jay-Z is a Sagittarius and Blue Cantrell is Pisces, Sue. Another coincidence? Now, when all these coincidences were brought up in a 2003 interview with The Guardian, Blue laid it straight, saying, I'm an adult, she's younger, and if she's doing what you're saying, then she's being a little immature. But Blue didn't stop there. She also threw a warning Beyonce's way, saying, Maybe she's trying to do it to get press, but I want to make her understand. If she goes there with me, it's the wrong move. She needs to understand what she's doing and what she's getting into. And when asked if she thinks Beyonce was throwing some subliminal shots at her, Blue said, If she is being negative, she doesn't need to be, because she's a beautiful girl. But if you have issues with your man, address it with the guy, don't take it out on the girl. It seems like Blue was hinting that Beyonce might have felt a bit threatened because Jay-Z still had some lingering feelings for her. Now, if that's the case, it could be the missing puzzle piece explaining why J and B named their first child Blue. Or, of course... Ain't that kind of crazy? Am I lying? What are we talking about here? Ain't that kind of crazy? He was allegedly messing with an R&B singer named On um, Blue. 10, what, 2000, 2001, in the beginning when I just showed y'all. Blue, uh, what, what, Blue, uh, what, um, Beyonce was pregnant and, and had Blue, what, 2011 around there? 10, what, 10, 11 to 12 years later, he named his daughter Blue from a female that he allegedly was in, was rumors around with, uh, upcoming R&B singer. Y'all don't find that strange? And like she said, she said, I don't know what's wrong with her. She's a young lady. Well, I don't know why she's worrying about me for it. And she's dating Jay-Z. That's her problem. She need to deal with him. That's basically what she's telling Beyonce at that time. Now, we're not talking about Beyonce now. We're talking about Beyonce was, that was 20, 21, 22 years old. What are we talking about here? And I'm going to explain how this Rockefeller and everything broke up also between this, between this blueprint he was having when he had Beyonce grown to him. He knew he had something. He could be the king of the arm hip hop and she could be the queen of, um, she could be the queen of r and and they succeed while doing that. You know why? Because he helped her. His first, her first album took off so well and made so much money. Now, remind y'all, we're not talking streams. We talking about them days you had to go to the stores and buy them CDs. That part, they was making way more money in the CDs ever. And I'm lying. What are we talking about here? Meaning DVD era. 
when you had to go in and get to see that era, yeah. And who helped her? Jay Z. He was producer. He helped her with the album. He groomed her. Smashed her. He knew he was a big celebrity. He said, "Why not go get me a little young girl and groom her and build her to what she is right now?" And he could control her. A legend, and everything I speak on is a legend. Let's continue with the. Let's continue. Let's continue with this blue arm um, clip, though. Let's continue. Their coincidence, but if the idea of naming your firstborn after an ex is creepy, wait till you hear what happened to Blue after she openly threatened Beyonce. Fast forward to September 2014, and Blue was found by the police wandering the streets of Santa Monica at 2 a.m., screaming about someone poisoning her with gas. According to TMZ, the episode went on long enough that someone called police, and Blue was then taken to a nearby hospital for an evaluation. In the meantime, Blue also got dropped from her label, and since then, it's been a rough ride for her. Rejection after after rejection from record labels. Back in 2013, she was optimistic, claiming to work independently on her third studio album. But fast forward to today, and that album is still M.I.A. So did Beyonce and Jay-Z really pull some strings behind the scenes, orchestrating Blue's sudden exit from the spotlight? Well, it's a question that quite a few industry figures are tossing around, including Jay's former background singer, Jaguar Wright. Jaguar pointed out that many artists who were seen as competition for Jay-Z and Beyonce met suspicious circumstances or witnessed their career hitting rock bottom overnight. Jaguar recalled the incident with former Def Jam artist Eric Sermon, who allegedly jumped from a third story window in September 2000. Now y'all remember the y'all remember that? I don't know if y'all followed. I don't know if y'all remember that story, but Eric Sermon was gonna approach Jay Z and, and, and talk to him about a few things, and they say he allegedly he threw himself out the window. But Jaguar White felt like somebody actually did that. Jay Z sent a couple niggas over there to check that nigga. Now, remind y'all, this is around the time when Jay-Z took over Def Jam. 2000, I just played a clip with y'all, played a clip with Beyonce praising Aaliyah. 2001, Aaliyah passed away, rest in peace in the plane crash. 2002, Dame Dash and Jay-Z started beefing around that time. Remember when Hove went on vacation with the infant went on, on that went on that infamous vacation with Beyonce? That was around that was around 2002, 2003, early before Beyonce album release. When Dame Dash said that when he was making Can Ron the vice president and Hove was on vacation with Beyonce, this is 2002, 2003, between them two years. What are we talking about here? On that vacation, allegedly, I think that Hove already set the blueprint for him and Beyonce to be on top and take over this game. When I get back, I'm, I'm going to separate myself from Dame Dash. We're going to take that deal from Dev Jam. I'm going to take over Dev Jam as on president. I'm going to drop all these niggas I don't want. That's my competition. And I'm going to succeed in here, and I'm going to make you the biggest R&B singer ever. That was the blueprint from early from the early 2000s that he wrote, and that's why he came out with that goddamn album, The Blueprints. That boy, man, he already had his rope, but see, everybody thought that Jay was going to do it by himself. No, he started doing it with Beyonce. And I'm going to show y'all, and I'm going to show you who explained that to, to, to the whole world. How Hove exploded and started winning, winning Grammy Awards, not by himself, with his wife, Beyonce. Because he know if he, if he groom her and make her, for what she is, the biggest R&B singer, that's powerful. That's my wife. I groomed her. I made them decisions on the records and all that and tell her what's hot and what's not hot. And I'm lying. What are we talking about here, man? Jay got an ear for music also, man. Let's continue to come. Let's continue with this blue thing, with this blue clip though. Let's continue. We still got more to go, man. The same month, looks like Blue took Jaguar's advice because an interview recently surfaced where she hinted that someone might have sabotaged her career on purpose. And while Blue obviously can't name any names to avoid getting sued for defamation, it's pretty clear what she meant. She explained that after the whole Beyonce and Jay-Z drama, she allegedly started experiencing issues with her label, Arista Records, when they forgot to renew her contract. I would have... Sabotage, blackball, whatever you want to call it, pause, anything. Everybody know they had something to do with that allegedly. What are we talking about here? Around that time, it was really powerful. Let's go to the last clip, though. 
have got my lawyer because that lawyer ended up representing them, which was a conflict of interest, so they were all working together to basically take what was mine, Blue said. Nobody really knows the whole truth but me and them, but I was really taken advantage of. Now, fans are connecting the dots and pointing out that it's not just Blue Cantrell. Many other female artists suffered a similar fate after allegedly becoming a threat to Beyonce, from Maya and Amory to Tira Marie and Carrie Hilson. One fan said, her breakdown was similar to Martin Lawrence. These companies really do try to kill their artists' actors off if they don't comply with them. The industry is wicked. And someone else added, Jay-Z's name comes up a lot when it comes to female, where are they now, documentaries. Karma never forgets. But what's your take on all this? Do you think... Karma's never forget that part. That's what I'm saying, though. That's what I'm... I'm everybody's saying, hold the next one to come down with these allegations coming. But you gotta understand, man, the, the biggest one is his wife. Allegedly, and everything I speak on is alleged. The biggest one is his wife. Y'all forgot what, I just broke it down to y'all. 2000, she was on a war show with Aaliyah. She was about 20 years old, bro. 19 going on 20. She looked at all, she looked at fan out. Go back, oh my God, Aaliyah. She, I played two more clips from 2002 when she first appeared on the MTV in New York with Hov. She's only about, what, 21 around that time. She slipped up and said, yeah, we've been to each other. From award shows and, and, and performance and all that. A couple of years. If you put a couple of years from 2002 from the, age that, from the age that she was at at that time, she was underage at that time, too. Allegedly. Everything I speak on is a legend. So Hove already had her under the wing, grooming her. That part. Why would she get jealous over this lady, over this female blue, around the time that she's only about 20, 21 years old. Hope just, Hope just introduced you to the world on MTV like in 2002 because he put you on his album. The video came out in early 2003. The Bonnie and Clyde video. This, this when it comes down to the Rockefeller breakup. Like I told y'all, when him and Dame Dash was beefing, they started beefing when in 2002, what a coincidence. That's when the Blueprint dropped album, the Blueprint one. Bonnie and Clyde dropped. He got Beyonce under the wing. They go on an infamous vacation with Dane Dash um, announced that Killer Cam, Cam Ron is the vice president of Rockefeller and basically Dipset and all that's taken over. Hove ain't like that. Hove come back from vacation. He, take, he takes the offer from Def Jam. 2004, Rockefeller breaks up. Now he's the president of Def Jam. And when he become president of Def Jam, what he does, he eliminate his all, all competition. The first one, this one right here. You used, used to be, be my dog, dog. you was, was in my, my left titty. titty. You know, Spring, screen ride or die, die. I thought, thought you would die, die with me. me. You know, what happened was, you know, like I said, I had the crazy track record of Def Jam, everything was good. You know, I go to do the sixth album, and you know, Jay -Z somebody became else president. takes over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, when he first got the job, he hit me with the call like, yo, dog, inmates is running the building like, yo, you good? Mm -hmm. Finish the album, shoot the video. So what happened? Mm -hmm. He's going on vacation and, you know, uh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, then don't know? Mm -hmm. mm, okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition, mm -hmm. you know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label. Now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, I mean, it's you used to be my... Am I lying? When Jay-Z jumped on Def Jam president, he became the vice president president of Def Jam. It was a lot of competition on Def Jam at that time as far as R&B singers and everything. You had Kerry Wilson. You had Kerry on Wilson. You had, all the females on Anne Marie, all of them. They was all under Def Jam at that time. All of them. That's competition for Beyonce. So as a vice president, whatever president that on um, hold was over there on Dev Jam, what he do? Put they put their career on hold. Let them drop a couple of singles, they blew up. And then after that, you never heard of them again. Beyonce kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And I'm lying, what are we talking about here? So his blueprint was a knockoff, his a, his elimination, because he act like he Remember when Hope said he retired and then he came back when he was on Dev Jam, dropped the album later on. Him later, he, he, he got rid of on DMX. He got rid of mad people over there. It was nobody over there but 
the only one that was profiting over there for Hove at that time was only Rihanna and, 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 and who else? Kanye. That's it. What are we talking about here? And those are the only two he needed at that time. And remember, there was allegations allegedly that Rihanna was dealing with Hove at the time when she was young, when she first got introduced to Hove. But them allegations kind of got shoved. They threw it away. We ain't never hear about it again. That part, allegedly. Let's look what 50 Cent had to say. Jay-Z's career, you can look at that and say the association to Beyonce is when he started to receive the 16, well, he got 16, 17 grams since he's been with Beyonce. Right? And, and you go prior to that, one. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that came in association. Like, like you see the, the kids even have grammys. Like, they don't, they don't sing yet. They don't sing. Right. <laughs> they don't rap yet. <laughs> and they already have grammys and shit. So it's like they give this, give them this trophy so, so we secure that they're coming mm. to the war show. It meant that much to the culture that they just gave them the things that Jay-Z's career, you can. Exactly. I just told y'all that about 10 minutes ago. When Hov started winning them Grammys, who he won them Grammys with? Beyonce. His career took off with Beyonce because he seen the blueprint. He seen the blueprint early with this girl. He groomed her, put her under the wing, started messing with her. After that, it was a wrap. Knocked off anything that came, anything that interfered the relationship between them two. Blackball anything that interfered between them two. What are we talking about? What competition Beyonce had throughout the years? And if she did, it was one hit one, then they got up out of here. Who work was that? Who did that work? Come on, what are we talking about here? Am I lying? <laughs> that was all hove. 50, what you said again? Jay-Z's career, you can look at that and say the association to Beyonce is when he started to receive the 16, well, he got 16, 17 grams since he's been with Beyonce. Right, and, and you go prior to that one. Right, you see what I'm saying? So that came in the before Beyonce. He only had one. Exactly. So what I'm trying to explain to y'all: the blueprint for his success was Beyonce, and he did a hell of a goddamn job with her. And I'm lying. What are we talking about here? Even though he did a lot of effery, foolery stuff, he broke up Rockefeller. That was a plan. He was gonna get rid of he he was gonna take that position with Dev Jam regardless. He he was tired of Dame Dash. He seen a bigger blueprint with him and Beyonce. That first album went crazy. Beyonce first album went crazy. What are we talking about here? And that Bonnie and Clyde single off of Jay-Z off that blueprint went crazy because that blueprint album wasn't even all that. What are we talking about? The one with Bonnie and Clyde, 2002, that one. That whole album was not all that. But that Bonnie and Clyde with him and Beyonce, that junk took off and went crazy. And I'm lying, what we talking about here? That part. So he was gonna he was gonna separate no matter what with them. He's already seen the blueprint. It was all it was gonna be and it's crazy because you know why? Because if you look at the Bonnie and Clyde on song and you hear the song, he already warned people 2002, then they mad 20 years ago about what he was gonna do. Him and his dying, him and his damn wife done succeeded, passed everybody, knocked everybody off. That was competition, all that. Rumors, allegations, all that. What are we talking about? Everything I speak on is a legend. From the industry, from the outside of industry rumors. They knocked everything off. Everything was blocked for them to get what they had to get right now as we speak. But his first thing was, let me let me let me knock off this Rockefeller thing right quick and join Dev Jam. While I doing when I join Dev Jam, I'ma knock off a couple of competition in there as artists, get DMX out of there, get a couple of people out of there. I'ma keep Kanye for the beats and do what I gotta do with him because I'ma come out of retirement and start making some more music. Did Jay-Z do that? Exactly. What are we talking about here? Because he knocked off his damn competition. Hit that like button. Smash that like button. Ain't gonna cost you, it's free. Smash the like button. What are we talking about? 
Exactly. When he joined Def Jam and he took over Def Jam, LL Cool J was at me. Come on, go back and do y'all research. All them artists was not doing what they had to do when Jay Z got there. He came out of retirement. He started making more music. Kanye made music and all that. Rihanna started making more music as an R and B singer. Beyonce at the other end was doing what she had to do on label she had, on a label she was under. No competition nowhere. Rihanna money was Jay Z money. That's why he kept Rihanna. What are we talking about? And I'm lying. That was the blueprint. And he did a hell of a job, I'll tell y'all that. He did a good job. He had to knock a couple walls down, do what he had to do, but he got him and his wife where they had to get, where they had to be at. Smash that like button, man. Do me that favor. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel. <laughs> Jay-Z did a hell of a job. Let's go back to DMX one more time. Used, used to, to be, be my dog, you was in my, my left titty. titty. You know, scream right or die. die, I thought, thought you would die, die with me. With me. You know, you what happened was, you know, like I said, I had the crazy track record of Def Jam, everything was good. You know, I go to do the sixth album, and you know, Jay-Z became president. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when he first got the job, he hit me with the call like, yo, dog, it makes us run in the building like, yo, you good? Mm -hmm. Finish the album, shoot the video. So what happened? Mm -hmm. He's going on vacation and, you know, uh -oh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, then don't know? Mm -hmm. mm, okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition, mm -hmm. you know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label. Now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, I mean, it's you used, used to be, be like, like that smoke up, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video, do me that favor. I told y'all, that was Jay-Z blueprint. He got, became president, knocked his whole competition out. Kept, he kept Kanye West as the producer, made him made him be so he could come out of retirement and do what he got to do is make some more sales. Rihanna was his, his, his money maker on the R&B side. His wife was making money over there. What she doing? What she's doing? That was the blueprint to take over. And they actually, what they did, they took over for several years. What are we talking about here? Beyonce took a couple styles, took a couple little, nah, I mean, let me take her style, let me take her style, let me take her style. That's what Beyonce did. And I'm lying. What are we talking about? Jay Z did the same thing too. Jay Z ain't always rapped the way he rapped. Go do your history. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, man. Do me that favor. A lot of smoke going on with Jay-Z, and we're going to talk about it. It's your boy Smoke News, man. Make sure you comment below and let me know what how y'all feel. What's going on with Hov? That's the blueprint, though. But he ain't no better than Diddy. That part. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button. It's your boy Smoke News TV. If they know, they know. Salute, y'all. I'm out of here, man.